The Golem, How He Came Into the World German, Der Golem, We Are in Die Welt Kam, also referred to as Der Golem, is a 1920 silent horror film and a leading example of early German expressionism. Paul Wegener starred as the titular creature, as well as co-directing the film with Carl Bowies and co-writing the script with Henrik Galeen based on Gustav Meyrink's 1915 novel. Photographer Carl Freund went on to work on the 1930s classic Universal horror films years later in Hollywood. This was the third of three films that Wegener made featuring the Golem, the other two being The Golem 1915 and the short comedy The Golem and the Dancing Girl 1917, in which Wegener dons the Golem makeup in order to frighten a young lady with whom he is infatuated. The Golem, How He Came Into the World is a prequel to The Golem from 1915 and as the only one of the three films that has not been lost, is the best known of the series. Plot <inaudible> 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 Set in the Jewish ghetto of medieval Prague, the film begins with Rabbi Lowe, the head of the city's Jewish community, reading the stars. Lowe predicts disaster for his people and brings his assistant to inform the elders of the community. The next day the Holy Roman Emperor signs a royal decree declaring that the Jews must leave the city before the new moon. The Emperor sends the knight Florian to deliver the decree. Lowe meanwhile begins to devise a way of defending the Jews. Upon arriving at the ghetto, the arrogant Florian falls in love with Miriam, Lowe's daughter, for whom his assistant shares affection. Lowe talks Florian into reminding the Emperor that it is he who predicts disasters and tells the horoscopes of the Emperor, and requests an audience with him. Having courted with Miriam, Florian leaves. By praying with God first, Lo begins to create the Golem, a huge monster which he will bring to life out of clay to defend his people. Florian returns later with a request from the Emperor for Lo to attend the Rose Festival at the palace. He shares a romantic moment with Miriam while Lo reveals to his assistant that he has secretly created the Golem, and requires his assistants to animate it. In an elaborate magical procedure, Lo and the assistant summon the spirit Astareth and compel him, as per the ancient texts, to say the magic word to bring life. This word is written on paper by Lo which is then enclosed in an amulet and inserted onto the golem's chest. The golem awakes. Lo's assistant then tames the golem, and the rabbi uses it as a household servant. When Lo is summoned to the palace for the festival, he brings the golem with him to impress the audience. Florian meanwhile slips away from the court to meet Miriam, whose house is being guarded by Lo's assistant under Lo's instruction. Back at the palace the court is both terrified and intrigued by the arrival of the golem. Impressed, the emperor asks to see more supernatural feats by Lo. Lo projects a magical screen showing the history of the Jews, instructing his audience not to make a noise. Upon the arrival of Ahasuerus, the wandering Jew, the court begins to laugh and the palace suddenly crumbles. As the building collapses around them, the golem intervenes and props up the falling ceiling, saving the court. As a sign of gratitude the emperor pardons the Jews and allows them to stay in the city. Lo and the Golem return to the ghetto, spreading the news that the Jews are saved. Lo returns to his house and begins to notice erratic behavior in the Golem. He reads that upcoming astrological movements will cause Astareth to possess the Golem and attack its creators. Lo removes the amulet and is called down by his assistant to join in the celebrations in the street. As the community rejoices, the assistant goes to inform Miriam and bring her to the synagogue but finds her in bed with Florian. Devastated, he reanimates the golem and orders it to remove Florian from the building. But the golem, now under Asteroth's influence, literally does so by throwing Florian from the roof of the house, killing him. 
Horrified, the assistant and Miriam flee, but the golem sets fire to the building and Miriam falls unconscious. Lo's assistant rushes to the synagogue to alert the praying Jews of the disaster, but upon their arrival at Lo's house they find that it is burning and both the golem and Miriam are missing. Despaired, the community begs Lo to save them from the rampaging golem. Lo performs a spell that removes Astareth from the golem. Promptly, the golem, who is wandering the ghetto causing destruction, leaves Miriam, whom he has been dragging by the hair through the streets, lying on a stone surface and heads towards the ghetto gate. He breaks the gate open and sees a group of girls playing. They all flee except for one, whom he picks up, having developed a docile nature following the removal of Astareth. Out of curiosity she removes the amulet from the golem. It drops her and collapses. Lo meanwhile finds Miriam, who awakes shortly after. Happily reunited, they are awkwardly joined by Lo's assistant, who informs him that the Jews are waiting for him by the gate. Lo having left, the assistant promises to Miriam that he will never tell anyone of her forbidden affair with Florian, and asks in return for forgiveness for his actions. The Jews meanwhile gather at the gate to find the dead golem. Rejoicing and praying, they carry it back into the ghetto, the Star of David appearing on the screen as the film ends. Cast Albert Steinruck as Rabbi Lowe Paul Wegener as the Golem Lida Samanova as Miriam Ernst Deutsch as Lowe's assistant Lothar Muthel as Knight Florian Otto Geber as Emperor Hans Sturm as Rabbi Jehuda Max Cronert as the Gatekeeper Greta Schroeder as a Lady of the Court Lonnie Nest as Little Girl Fritz Feld as a Jester Production Wegener had been unhappy with his 1915 attempt at telling the story, due to compromises he had to make during its production. His 1920 attempt was meant to more directly convey the legend as he heard it told in Prague while he was filming The Student of Prague 1913. .In 1919, Wegener announced plans for Alron und der Golem, uniting the two folklore characters in one film. Though posters and other publicity material survive, it was almost certainly never made. Instead, Wegener produced his 1920 film, but later starred as Professor Jakob ten Brinken in the 1928 version of Alron. It was shot at the Tempelhof Studios in Berlin. Architect and designer Hans Poelzig created the film's scenery as a highly stylized interpretation of the medieval Jewish ghetto of Prague. Preservation and home video status The Golem is in the public domain and over the years has been released many times in poor quality, unrestored black and white versions. The film was first restored in 1977 in Germany and scored by Karl Ernst Sass. This version is unavailable on home video. In 2000, a second restoration was carried out by the Cineteca del Comune di Bologna at the laboratories of Limogene Ritrovata in Italy and licensed by Transit Film. This version is based on an export print transferred at 20 frames per second and with its original tinting intact. It was given an ensemble score by Aljoscha Zimmermann and released on DVD in Germany, Universum Film, 2004, the UK, Eureka, 2003, France, MK2, 2006, Spain, Divisa, 2003, and the US, Kino Lorba, 2004. A third, fully digital restoration, this time based on the original domestic negative, was completed by the Friedrich Wilhelm Murnai Foundation. Foundation in 2017 and is available on DCP. Topic: 
Topic: Critical response. Critical reception for The Golem upon its initial release was positive. The New York Times 1921 review praised its "...exceptional acting," and "...expressive settings," the latter of which was compared to those of another early German expressionist horror film, Robert Wien's The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari 1920. Film review aggregator Rotten Tomatoes reported an approval rating of 100%, based on eight reviews, with a rating average of 7.9.10. Film critic Leonard Maltin gave the film three and a half out of a possible four stars, calling it a chilling, visually dazzling story of the supernatural, based on a famous Jewish folk tale of the 16th century, and a classic of German Expressionist cinema." Maltin also noted the film as a forerunner to the 1931 film adaption of Frankenstein. The film was presented at the Star and Shadow Cinema in 2014 as part of the British Film Institute's Gothic season. This screening featured a new unique live soundtrack which was the result of a collaboration between Noise Choir and Wax Magnetic. The Castle, Newcastle screened the film in 2016, again with a live soundtrack from Noise Choir, this time accompanied by artists Mariam Reza A and Adam Denton from The Old Police House. Dennis Schwartz from Ozis's World Movie Reviews rated the film a grade B+, praising the film's powerful visuals. In his review of the film, Schwartz wrote, "...a landmark of early German expressionism. It is through the striking black and white German expressionism photography of Karl Freund that the film displayed its unusual feel for the macabre and might be considered a precursor to the Frankenstein horror films and how horror films were to be made from now on." The film is listed in 101 Horror Films You Must See Before You Die, a spin-off of 1001 Films You Must See Before You Die, which the authors called, "...a classic of German Expressionist cinema". See also List of films made in Weimar Germany List of films with a 100% rating on Rotten Tomatoes